All right, guys, this is our uh, last video for the week. It's 21.7, and it's all about transformers, electrical transformers, that is. Um, electrical transformers um, are based around the concepts that we learned about with solenoids, and this is why we had to cover sort of the stuff we did before. Um, so when you have a loop of wire and you run a current through it, okay, it's going to create a magnetic field. So think of this as an iron washer, if you will, or it's called an iron core. We wrap some wire around over here, and we run an alternating current, an AC current through here. Okay, It's going to create a magnetic field that will rotate uh, from going around this way and then going around this way every 60, sec or 60 times a second. It's going to alternate back and forth based on the um, frequency we use in this circuit here, in this uh, current coming in. As it alternates back and forth, it's going to create a back and forth motion of magnetic field. Well, we also learned that when there's a magnetic field that's moving, it will induce, okay, it's called induction, it induces a current over here in our second uh, or our secondary coil. So what that means is that without connecting this wire directly to this wire, we're able to transfer an electric current from here to here using magnetism. And this was a huge deal. This has a ton to do with why we use AC power today um, and, and why Nikola, Tes Nikola Tesla was so important um, to our society. Here's sort of the catch to it. If the number of loops on one side is greater than or less than the other side, there's not as strong of a, the magnetic field doesn't create the same current that's being induced. If I had six loops here and six loops here, they'd be identical and there would be the same magnetic field being created. And so that same magnetic field would create the same current on the other side if we have 100% efficiency, which we don't always, but we're just going to run with that for the sake of simplicity. However, when we have a different number of loops on each side, it creates a different reaction or relationship between magnetic field and um, and current. Remember that when we talked about solenoids, the more loops you had, the stronger the magnetic field would be. Well, if I have less loops, then the current coming out is going to be smaller because the magnetic field doesn't have as many layers to pile on. And so we end up with these three relationships. Uh, that the secondary voltage, okay, divided by the primary voltage, Okay, so S for secondary, P for primary, is equal to the same ratio in terms of the number of loops that NS over NP. If you have 10 times the loops in the secondary coil that you have in the first, so let's say we had 3 here, but we have 30 in the secondary, then if we started with 2 volts, we would have 30 or 10 times the volts would have 20 volts. And so this proportionality of voltage based on the number of loops is really, really important. Well, there's a second piece that's really significant here, okay? And it has to do with the fact that the power, okay, is being conserved from one side to the other, okay? And so what that means, if you think about power equals IV, if the voltage is going up, then the current must be coming down. There you have an inverse relationship, which means that if the number of loops in the secondary over the number of loops in the primary creates a fraction, that the current would be in the exact opposite ratio. Okay, and so our third relationship here, these are all interchangeable. It's just that Vs over Vp would equal Ip over Is. You can use any arrangement of these. You can flip these upside down. Um, it's basically a cross-multiplication problem, um, but it is just that straightforward. Now, here's why this matters so much. Power consumption can be measured by Iv, but when we're talking about current in an AC circuit, and voltage that we're going to create. The reality is the power in here is the same. 
But if I can get the power loss due to the uh, wire to drop. See, with direct current, when we ran electrical wiring, the longer you made the wire, you just lost so much power that you couldn't travel direct current very far if you produced it. That was Edison's problem. Tesla said, if we think of power as I squared times R, which is one of our variants, okay, we take V and replace it with IR, okay, and that produces I squared R. He found that if we could reduce the current, make this go down really, really low, okay, this was the wire's resistance, that we would lose very little power in transferring this electricity, but we had to do it with a low current. Well, based on this principle down here, if we want the secondary coil to be small in current, we need the secondary voltage to be very high. And so if we could just use a transformer to crank up the voltage, okay, so high voltage was going to produce low current. And with a low current, we have low power loss, which was really what we're after. We want to reduce the power loss. And so we're going to use these three equations. Uh, it's, it's really pretty straightforward algebra. The catch that most of you are going to have is understanding that primary is like the source, maybe an outlet, okay? Secondary is the device or its uses. Okay, so what are we using the electricity for? Um, there are two types, step up and step down. Step up, the voltage goes up. Step down, the voltage goes down. I wish that there was a lot more that I could say, oh, we got to remember this, we got to remember that. Truth is, there's not a lot else in this chapter. I love this section because it is really just this simple. Um, but uh, while we do use them to step up, to get to high voltage transmit, and then we'll have step downs, and then you'll notice, hey, let me go back here. If we look at our little garbage can here. Maybe I'll show you another picture here. But that right there is your standard transformer for household use. We do not want to, we want to step it down so it's usable for the average person. Um, we don't want to do it till we get pretty close to your house. Um, but we'll step down along the way just to make sure we're not running really high power lines in a neighborhood. Or sometimes we'll bury them underground so you won't even see the transformer boxes as much anymore. Let me show you a couple of pictures here. Um, right here is an example of a transformer um, with a core. Uh, here's some pictures. You've seen these transfer stations. You've seen these types of deals. Um, probably all around you. There's another one of those garbage can shaped ones. Um, let's see if I can find a good, this one comes out of like a microwave or a heating element, something that's gotta have a lot of power. Uh, but you can see all these different types of transformers that are commonly used. Let's go back in here and jump down to the homework problems. You're doing 30 through 36, which are right down here in our transformers. Um, and so some things you think about, uh, they're pretty straightforward for the first part. Um, 34, a model, trans model train transformer plugs into 120 AC source. Okay, that right there, it's plugged into 120. That would be your primary, okay? And it draws, 0.35 amps while supplying 7.5 amps to the train. That 7.5 amps is to the train, which means it must be to the device, the, the secondary current. The 0.35 must be the, the primary current. And so you can kind of walk your way through that and try to figure those things out. Um, remember, you have all three of those equations, but there's not a lot else to it. You just need to ask your questions when you get stuck.